everybody. I'm Larry Ridley, and this is the NFL on EA Sports. Confidence is never a question when it comes to wide receivers, and these two are no different. It's the Bills going up against the Seahawks. With that, let's get you up to Seattle. We're standing by are our commentators, Brandon Guyton and Sean Davis. Larry, EA Sports coverage of the NFL brings us to the Evergreen State and CenturyLink Field in Seattle, Washington. Coming up, we've got what should prove to be a good one between the Buffalo Bills and the Seattle Seahawks. Hello, everybody. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon God. As we get set here, Charles, we talk about wide receivers. You know, Larry mentioned it in the open. But that's a big spot to look at here in this one. I think you identified it perfectly because these guys have such an impact on the game nowadays because they throw the ball more than ever. And whether they're throwing it short, medium, or long, can they snatch it out of the air and create even extra yardage with run after catch? Steven Hauschka now about set to get this one started. And off we go from Seattle. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And with a new rule, that decision to bring it out will cost him about five yards as he only gets to the 20. Buffalo fell against New England in week eight. Here they come on offense led by Tyrod Taylor to try to get back on the winning track. Taylor, kind of a nondescript game in week eight, wasn't it, Charles? And what you look to get from him are those huge plays, those splash plays, those big ones that break games open. He didn't give them that against New England, and when that happens, the Buffalo offense bogs down just a little bit. Here's the first carry for LaShawn McCoy, and he'll power his way up near the 25. They give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. And here's our first look today at this offense. And let's start with LaShawn Shady McCoy, their star running back. He can do everything. Run it inside, get to the perimeter, and, of course, catch it out of the backfield. And they're six yards away from picking up the first here on second down. Fake to McCoy. Now it's Taylor. And some room to maneuver. And he's brought down, getting this one up to about the 35. Give him 11 yards that time and a new set of downs. First down carry here for McCoy. Looking for an opening, not much there. He'll get it to the 39. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. The Seahawks, here's their defensive lineup. Earl Thomas is the rangiest free safety in the game. Great reactions, great understanding, and boy, will he strike you when the ball's in his area. Taylor with a draw to McCoy. And this play will be blown up. He'll lose yardage back at the 38. He'll wind up losing a yard on the play, and that'll bring up a third down. What a tremendous play by the defensive line. Instead of getting too far upfield against the draw, able to hold their spot and make a big play in the backfield. seven and an extra defensive back on the field here definitely want to play coverage here now it's taylor finding time looking deep downfield the ball popped in the air and intercepted 
intercepted. Picked off by the All-Pro free safety, Earl Thomas. And they have possession, and they have it at the 38-yard line. So the roughing the passer penalty, 15 yards, and Charles, the defender, needs to know to stop there. We've been talking about it for years. You essentially get one step after the quarterback throws his pass. Anything close to that or beyond that, you're going to get flagged. Going to get this one down near the 45 yard line. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. So McCoy adding to his yardage total in this one. Last year, 895 yards in his first season in Buffalo. Of course, he had Charles' 4,000 yard years in Philadelphia. And you know the man they call Shady wants to throw some shade at the Eagles for ever letting him go. He wants a big year in 2016. Decent chunk of yardage still left here. Second and seven. They'll go again to McCoy. And he'll get it down on the play to the 37. Eight yards on the pick up there, and it moves the sticks. That's a good, nice, crisp run for a first down. I wonder if the defense might have been loosened up a little bit, maybe anticipating a pass instead of the run that they got. And a new set of downs here after picking up the first on the ground. Now it's Taylor. And he's got his man on the out route. It's a gain of seven, and it'll be second down. Partner, it's a lot of fun watching the NFL now, isn't it? Because when the big fella runs routes, it used to be when we were kids, he'd run about three different routes, and that was it. Now he can run anything and catch the balls we just saw there. So second down, three yards to go now. Now flags will come in. One of the Bills got going a little early. Still second down. They come out with one back and three tight ends. And here is motion again. And that's going to be two in a row. False start offense. Still second down. And he'll lose yardage here. Back at the 41. It'll be a loss of one. And it's going to be third down and a ways to go here. Third and 14. That play almost seemed like a baseball play. See ball, hit ball. But in this case, see guy with ball, tackle guy with ball. secondary here on third and 14. And Charles, this infraction is going to be against the offense. False start. Sometimes you have to get up to the line of scrimmage. Make sure your team is set before you begin your cadence. Still third down.
So a costly penalty and now a tougher third down situation. And now movement again, and they'll march even further backward. Still third down. They'll come out in the pistol. And here is motion again. And that's going to be two in a row. Postal offense. Still third down. So it's third and long, and defensively, not a real surprise there in the dive. From the shotgun, it's Taylor. He sets to fire deep. Looking this time for runs, and it's intercepted. Picked off by the all-pro free safety, Earl Thomas. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Earl Thomas, a defensive guy that can make things happen. Arguably the best center fielder in the game today. He patrols the middle of the field with speed and with fury. And tough starting field position here. Now the fourth-year man from Texas A&M, Kristen Michael. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. Michael had his fifth visit to the end zone in week eight. 40 yards on 10 carries, though, so not a whole lot of production for him. Began the season hot. I mean, came out really blazing and looked like he would be able to replace Thomas Rawls' production from last year. But in recent weeks, that number has continued to go down, and Seattle's throwing the ball more than ever. They run again with Michael. And they'll bring him down here right around the 17-yard line. They get five out of that one, and it moves the chains. And that's a nice pickup of a first down on that second down run. And at that yardage gain, they can run that plant any down. here on first down looking right sideline but it's incomplete he was trying to get it to Jermaine Curse. that'll bring up second down I hope I don't sound too rah-rah on that one but that's the exact right throw either your receiver gets it or no one gets it give him a lot of credit for being really precise with it got rid of it no one got it Second and ten now, Wilson. Now they set up the screen. That's complete. And he'll be a couple yards shy of the 20 at the 18. So many things have to come together just right for a screen pass to break for big yardage. The blocking, the timing of the pass to the runner, everything has to fit together just right. But on that play, the defense was able to disrupt things and hold it to a short game. Still nine yards to go on third down. On third down, Wilson. He'll dump it off to Procise. And they'll bring him down at the 27-yard line. It'll be a gain of nine. Procise, he did a little bit on the ground and through the air in their game in Week 8, didn't he? And that speaks to who he is as a player. We always talk about hybrid players on defense, guys who can do multiple things. Well, there are plenty of them on offense as well. Procise at Notre Dame was a running back and a wide receiver. He got the bulk of his receiving yards against New Orleans on a nice trick play with a lateral to Tanner McAvoy, 
It was a quarterback, safety, and tight end at Wisconsin who threw it back to him. And a fair catch signaled for and taken just outside the 20-yard line. So a change of possession here on the punt. And the Bills will take over the football with a first and 10. We focus our attention on the Seahawks' defense now. And as we're going to see right here, they have been laying some pretty electrifying hits in this one. And these are for real. Okay, as you watch, think about putting yourself in that spot, about being the ball carrier or the receiver. I don't want to. And then taking that shot, it is something else. It's not like when we were watching that, that video clip where they showed you how they make sounds for movies. <laughs> this is for real. Trying to shake off the interception, he'll look to throw. And his throw is going to be incomplete. He was trying to get it to LaShawn McCoy. And now it's second down. It's a tried and true formula, and I don't think it'll change for as long as we play football. If someone's trying to throw the ball and you can put pressure on them and make it tough, that's only going to help your defense. Yeah, he's since being hurried. He got rid of it before taking the hit, but incomplete. Second down, it's McCoy. And he'll be taken down right around the 27. It'll be a pickup of five, and that leaves him with five more. Third and five now. Frustrating for a defense, energizing for an offense. Finding a way to create that type of yardage in your running game, that'll make the guys carrying the ball very, very happy. They come up in an empty set. Four wide receivers, one tight end. From the gun on third down, it's Taylor. Got a man, and he hits him in stride. And he's got the first before he's brought down at the 39-yard line. Give him 12 yards on that one. It earns him a fresh set of downs. But it appears that they read man defense and went to the out route. And what you have to do on that one is the receiver's got to make sure he works the defender towards the middle of the field to give himself space to cut to the outside and have that ball delivered with good timing. And they got it done. Now the offense lining up first and 10. Taylor with a give to McCoy. And nowhere to run on the interior of that defensive line. He'll get back only to the line of scrimmage. Kind of running there at your own risk against that 4-3 in that big line, aren't you? Yeah, and I don't really run it against a good 4-3 team that well because I've got to get those guys on the move a little bit. If you're a static running team, meaning you just want to run it in the middle, you may have some trouble against good defensive tackles. That's what we just saw in that play. No game. Again, it's McCoy. And once again, not much running room, if any at all. Only a yard in the pickup there, so it leaves him needing a conversion here on third and a tough nine. We know that old expression, it's not my night. It hasn't been his so far. I don't know if the legs are a little bit heavy. Sometimes having to hang out all day and play doesn't exactly play to your advantage, but it's been a tough go for him. And every time he looks up, somebody's there defensively. That was the same case on that play. To throw is Taylor. He rifles one that's intercepted. A great read, and it's picked off. And he will return this one to the 30-yard line. So that's back-to-back -back drives where they've thrown an interception. Ordinarily, we look at the offense and say, what's going on with your scheme? Maybe we should look at the defense and just give them a whole lot of credit. They've got them frustrated right now. And Seattle now ready to march out of the field. And last time out, they had to punt the football away. Anything positive possibly to take from that? There always is when, when you're punting the football away. It doesn't sound like it because you're giving it up. But you've avoided a mistake. At least you didn't turn it you over, You didn't I turn guess. it over, right? You're giving, it, you're giving your defense a chance because you're punting the ball away and they're set to go on the field as opposed to sudden change after a turnover. And wow, now we've got to go out there and stop people. So yeah, there's always something bad to be gained from it. After the interception, here's Wilson. It's caught on the left side by Baldwin. That one goes for 13 yards and it moves the sticks. I don't care how many times you tell the story, it never loses its luster for me. Doug Baldwin, 
undrafted out of Stanford and plays like a number one receiver should in the NFL. I don't care how you cover him. I don't care that his size isn't great. He's the one that typically comes up with the football. Absolutely. His roots go all the way back to Gulf Breeze, Florida, where he's from right on the water near Pensacola. And then, of course, to Stanford. And, boy, he's been good. And he was able to shed the tackle, but the reserves come in for the stop. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. Not a run that you're going to write home about, but still a good first down run. That's what an offense calls staying on schedule. Three to four yards on first down. You're set up very well for the rest of the drive. Now they'll run it on the toss. And he'll find his way down inside the 10 to the 9-yard line. Give him four on the carry, and it'll make this a third and about two. In today's NFL, you hear all the time about stretching the field and creating space in order to run plays. A toss play will help accomplish that because now you're pushing a defense to chase you all the way to the edges and to the sideline. That's a nice run probing now early to try and get things done later. They'll run it now out of the gun. No gain there on the play, and that's going to leave them with a fourth down. So nothing there, but maybe you blame that on the blocking. Yeah, at some point, you've got to win at the point of attack, and on that play, that was all the defense. They made it happen. On is Hauschka now for the Seahawk field goal. From the right hash here, should be an easy one. And Hauschka's kick is good. And the Seahawks grab a 3-0 lead. So the drive takes him inside the 10, but it ends with just three. And a nice job defensively to rise up and make sure they didn't get in. Now after the made field goal, Hauschka back out onto the field to kick it away. On the return, it's Brandon Tate. And he'll take this across the 25, a couple extra yards, up to the 27-yard line. As Buffalo comes back out on offense, I peek down at the division standings. Patriots, three full games up on them, so maybe that's a loss cause. But at 4-4, four and four, what's the identity of Buffalo right now? I think they're still trying to figure it out, Brandon, because they started the season 0-2, made some changes in their offensive staff, ran off a four-game streak, and remember, they were up in the second half at Miami and lost that game, and now they're on a two-game losing streak. They've got to find a way to get some continuity so they can still continue to make a push at a wild-card spot. One man in the backfield, that's McCoy. And he'll get it up the middle. And he'll take this up near the 35, maybe the 34. A solid run on first down, gain of seven, leaves him with a second and three. First play of the drive. Let's give credit all around. Excellent blocking, but a guy carrying the ball. He was the finisher. A really nice run. And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. Now it's Taylor. It's a short one here, complete to his tight end. They give him 13 yards there on the play and a fresh set of downs. Let's just make this one simple. Could he be any more open than he was on that play? Yeah, they lost him going to the outside. Hard to believe because you go through your accounting on each and every defensive snap. Who's got who, what, what defense you're in. That was totally a blown coverage. So here we go, first and 10 now. Here's Taylor to the sideline, and oh, a nice catch there. Made sure the feet were inbounds, and they were. Was that a receiver? <laughs> yeah, actually it was. It was a running back who was a receiver on the play. Ike, has been spending time in the receiver drills getting his feet down. Well, those guys out of the backfield, they got to be good, agile with their feet. He showed the agility there with a toe tap. No doubt about it. It's like he'd went to ballet school, got the toes down, and stayed inbounds. Tenth carry now for McCoy. 
And nowhere really to go there. He'll take this up just shy of midfield. Just a couple there on the second down run. Now they're staring at a third and eight situation. I do know from experience that when you slow down someone's running game, you're now doing the dictating on defense. And guess what? Now you're getting ready to tee off on their quarterback because they have to throw it all the time. But you still have to be alert for the draws and other plays of that nature to make sure you don't get hurt. On third down, Taylor finding his safety valve here. That's complete. Now a loose football. The ball comes out, and the Seahawks have picked it up. And a super return as he gets this all the way down inside the 25-yard line. Often on fumbles, you look at the guy who coughed it up and say, geez, what did he do? But hey, let's tip the cap to the defense here. Not a problem at all, my man. I'm not only going to tip it, I'm going to doff my cap to him. Congratulations, big time play. Knocking it free and creating something good for your team. The Seattle offense now set to come back out on the field. And they had three points last time, but they didn't want three points because they were well within range of scoring a touchdown. We'll see if they can do better now. I'm with you on that one. Let's just go ahead and be frank about the whole thing. The only one happy about the three-point kicker. Exactly. You <laughs> put it through the post, that's going to help him at contract time. But that offense, they're thinking, let's get in the end zone this time. I don't know if that helped him at contract time. You, you could have kicked that one through. I don't know about that. <laughs> toe bash. I don't know about toe that. Bashed it. <laughs> Super <laughs> following the fumble recovery it's Wilson and he just gets rid of it throws it away a wise move there looked like nobody open now second down how many times when we see an incomplete pass we just look at the receiver and say ah should have caught that when that was a drop and we just put it on the offense how about a little credit for the defense there? They just forced an incompletion. Yeah, especially after starting in a tough spot defensively, but a good start there on first down. That gave them a little extra confidence there, starting, as you said, in a tough spot and being able to make a play on first down. He's going to find his running back. It's complete. Give him two yards on that play, and they're going to have a third down. Everyone's got to be able to catch the football. Doesn't matter what position you play, but if you're on offense, be aware a ball may come your way. Well, good field position to start the drive, but under the gun now here on third and eight. In the slot on the right is Graham. Now the former Notre Damer, this is C.J. Procise. And he'll get him inside the 15 down to the 14-yard line. A good gain there on third and eight of seven yards, and now a decision here on fourth and one. And that looked like some pretty easy yardage there right up the gut. And he's a guy that has some height to him. So when you don't have to drop a shoulder or create or get through contact or trash, it makes it a lot easier to stay upright, see the field, and make a run as we just saw there. And Hauschka's kick is good. And that'll make it 6-0 here in the first. So they recover the fumble but could not take advantage of the short field. They do get three. And no one ever turns down three points going up on the board. But the offense will go to the sidelines wondering what if. On the defense on the other side, they'll celebrate holding them with just a field goal after giving up such bad field position. Now after the made field goal, Hauschka back out onto the field to kick it away. Fielded about a yard deep. So quick on the spin. Uh, he's spinning, man. And the decision to come out is going to cost him five yards with a new rule as he's taken down right at the 20-yard line. Just one tick to go, so this will obviously be the final play of this first quarter. They'll throw on first down with Taylor, and that'll be incomplete. At the end of one, 6-0 is our score. We'll be back to Seattle right after this. NFL on EA Sports. 
Sports is brought to you by Gatorade, the sports fuel company. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. Second quarter about to get underway with the Bills in possession. They've got it second and ten to start things out. Taylor going to hand this one off to McCoy. And he's going to lose yardage here. Back to his own 18. It's a loss of two. Now third down. The defense won that play so fast that I think if the running back even had time to notice if anyone was there, it was just a blink of an eye, and there was a loss on the play. A nickel look by Seattle on third down. Yep, five defensive backs now. Out of the gun, it's Taylor. Pressure gets to him, and down he goes. Back at the four-yard line. The defense rising to the challenge and setting him back on the sack. Well, if an offense is going to throw the ball in this part of the field, any pass rusher will tell you that's his favorite part. Gets a chance to get after the quarterback. It's almost like a reverse red zone. They can create points using their defense, and this time they take their man down. Here's Colton Schmidt now. And no room for air here as his first punt comes from deep in his own end zone. And he's able to get it out of there. And this is a pretty good kick. 51 yards on the punt there. And it'll be Seahawk football first and 10. And Seattle now ready to march out of the field. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember they did put points on yeah, the board. Three points and, is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily right. done. Now Wilson on first down. Baldwin with it over the middle. And he's going to be taken down right at the line. No gain on the play there. It'll be second down. The defense loves to hang their hat on that, don't they? You get a guy that catches the ball, but you stop him for no gain. Without a doubt, because they're also used to trying to catch people after the catch, and they miss. And that turns into what? A huge play. We've seen it so many times. In this case, though, catch was made, put down right on the spot. They'll run it here with Michael. And this play will be blown up. He'll lose yardage back at the 38. He lost two there, and it's third down. The evaluation process in today's NFL does not take into account as much bulk as it does speed. And that's what we're seeing with the linebacker position. Those guys that can run, they can play at any spot because they can make plays on the opposite side of the line of scrimmage. So now a third and 12 with an extra defender here in the secondary, a nickel look. Now contact up front as penalty markers come in. Who is this against? Encroachment, defense. Still third down. DB on the field for the Bills here on third down. Yeah, maybe thinking pass. On third down, Wilson. He's got time in the pocket. He's going to hit his man out of the backfield. Complete. And he'll get it out a couple yards shy of midfield at the 48. So many times you hear today's NFL described as a space game. Get your best players into space with the football in their hands. That's why sometimes you just swing it out to your runner 
get him out in the flat, and let him have a chance to make people miss an open field. Here's John Ryan now. On for his second punt. He'd take a repeat of his first. And the kick's away as he angles this one for the sideline. And no return here. Where will they spot it? They say just outside the 20-yard line. And here come the Bills. And three and out on the last drive. No points on the scoreboard. A little soul-searching now? I would say so. And they need to help out their defense a little bit. They've had to be on yeah, the field a lot position. more than normal, put them in some tough spots. But what's the old adage? When you get another chance, it gives you a better chance to do it right. One man on the backfield, that's McCoy. He'll get the football here, and he'll take this one up close to the 25-yard line. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. That's a good play by the guys on the defensive side of the ball. Held him to a gain of two, and that changes the playbook a little bit now for the guy calling plays. Second and eight. Now he's got to probably think about going to the air instead of maybe staying with the ground game. Again, we'll see the pistol here. They'll run it with McCoy. Boy, shifts past him. Officially no gain on the play, and they're left with a third and eight. Great play there off the end. Question, Charles. In a 4-3, you hear about the D tackles a lot. What's the role of the ends? What they want to do is control the edges of the defense. And you always hear about an offense talking about setting the edge in the running game. Well, the defense wants to do exactly the same thing. And the defensive end, often against an offensive tackle, sometimes a tight end, they can't let themselves get a hook and let a running back get outside. Because if they do that, that hurts the integrity of the defense overall. My man, the encyclopedia. I know where we're headed on this. Terrific catch, gets his feet down, sets up a fourth down and short situation. But I bet we're wondering, why didn't he get to the first down marker running his route? Am I correct? You got to know where the marker is, right? Got to figure it out. I know every receiver has taught that. Sometimes circumstances change it. At least they have an opportunity to make a decision with not much yardage to go. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. <laughs> Officially, that'll go as a 52-yard punt. Not too shabby. And it'll be Seahawk football as they take over deep in their own territory. A chance for us now to look at this Bills defense again. They have a little something to build off of from last time with a three and out. And what they have to build off of? Great confidence right now. Being able to stuff someone on a three and out. You feel like you're in control now. You're doing the dictating. They want to see if that can continue as this game progresses. Will it continue? We'll see. On the run, this is Michael. And not a whole lot to speak of there as they'll bring him down shy of the 20. Give him a couple on the carry there, second and eight. Well, they held him to a short gain on that one, and it almost felt like on that first run, they were trying to just throw the jab at him. So how do you stop the jab? Get closer and smother it, just as they did on that last play. On the ground, it's Michael. And a short pick up here as he'll get up to about the 22-yard line. Give him three on the run there. Now they're looking at a third and about five. Well, I think we know by now that every run is not going to be broken and get all the way to the end zone. But these short ones still have their value. You can still set up your play action and throw the football. You control the clock because you have the ball and they don't. And often the physicality sets the tempo for the game. From the gun on third down, Wilson. He's got time. And that is incomplete. C.J. Procise was the intended target, and it's fourth down. And I think the end result, knocking the ball away, was a product of understanding where they were on the field, understanding how many yards they needed to pick up the first down, and tightening their coverage accordingly. Gave them no gaps, no spaces, no real air in which to catch the football and end up making a really nice play. After the TD, here's Carpenter on to kick it away. 
Columbus fielded at the two. Then a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. And out now come the Seahawks. And on the last go-around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. Now a handoff here to his running back. And this has been a recurring theme tonight for sure. Nowhere to run. Back to the line of scrimmage, that's all. So nothing there. I don't know that that's all in the back, though. you got to look at blocking there, don't you? I would agree with that totally. At some point, they have to win at the point of attack. Instead, it was the defense getting it done again and holding them to no gain. Now Wilson on second down. It's caught outright by Graham. And he gets this one just shy of the 40. They'll mark him down at the 39. Two minutes remain here in the first half. Back to Century Link Field after this. We remind you that coming up at halftime, we'll pay a visit to Larry Ridley in Orlando with our EA Sports Halftime Report. Fresh set of downs here. Larry, Larry, Larry. In the slot on the right is Graham. Now Wilson on first down. And the catch is made here by Tyler Lockett. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. And they're going to speed things up here. They'll throw on first down with Wilson. And it's complete to Lockett. And he's brought down. They give him 15 more, and it's another first down. And now the passing game here in the second quarter is starting to heat up a little bit. Don't you feel the rhythm starting to happen, right? You see it now. The confidence is starting to rise. I think now as a play caller, because that has happened, you lean on it a little bit more. You don't go totally away from running the football, but you do say, guess what? We can throw it. We can throw it well with a whole lot of confidence. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. One receiver left, two to the right. And the hard count got the defense there. Encroachment and the five-yard penalty. Encroachment, defense. Still first down. Two receivers left, one to the right. Again, Wilson. He's got time. A hit as he throws there, incomplete. The good signal callers would never go back in the huddle and play the blame game because they need those guys to protect him. But on that last one, his offensive line, they lost their leverage very quickly, and that's why they were able to get to him and hit him as he tried to throw the football and force an incompletion. In the slot on the right is Graham. Wilson will throw again. Surveying the field. And seeing nowhere to throw, he chucks this one away from harm, incomplete. Now it's third down. And right now I take my rudimentary kindergarten skills and draw where the tackle box would be because that was close. I thought he was in the tackle box. He has to be very careful where he gets rid of the football from that spot. Yeah, they say there was a receiver in the area, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's always a receiver in the area. Throwing again here, Wilson. Finding time. He'll dump it off to Procise. 
And he's going to have a first down here as he gets this one to the 17-yard line. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. It's shining here before we get to halftime. So we're back in the offense getting set following the call of that timeout. And the defense with their backs against the wall a little bit here as the offense is in the red zone. From the red zone now, here's Wilson on first down. This will be caught just inside the 10. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. So the offensive unit called the T.O. And now we are ready to resume play. To throw again is Wilson. It's caught on the left side by Kurz. And he will score. Touchdown, Seattle. Jermaine Kurz from three yards out. And the Seahawks are going to retake the lead. And while that touchdown does not give them an insurmountable lead, it's still a lead, and that always feels good to a team. They'd love to take that into the lockers, but a little time left on that clock, so some work to do. I like that. I like how you're guarding against a letdown there. Are you looking forward? Coaching them up from right up here in the booth. And he puts this one through as the lead moves to 13-7. Hauschka now to send this one away following the score. Fielded about a yard deep. And a pretty good return here. He'll be stopped just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. Illegal block in the back. Return team. They'll throw on first down with Taylor. Going to drop this off to McCoy. Complete. And he's brought down after a good game. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. They'll put two receivers left, two to the right. On first and ten, it's Taylor. Quick hitter here, it's complete. And he's out of bounds just before the midfield stripe at the 49. Never make the mistake that these slot receivers, especially the little guys like we're watching here, are just quicker than fast. A lot of them combine quickness and speed, and they catch a lot of footballs as we just saw there. Now 
Taylor to throw on second down. Over the middle and caught by the tight end, Clay. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. And we're back. The offense had a chance to talk things over. We'll see what they come up with here on this next play. So the offense has it first and 10. To throw again is Taylor. Just a one-yard pickup on the play, and it'll be a second down. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage look defensively. On second down, Taylor. And that's going to be incomplete. 12 seconds left. Justin Hunter, the one he was searching for. And it's third down. First down line at the 34 here on third down. Here we go. Out of the gun, it's Taylor. Incomplete, and we're down to eight seconds now. Here's Colton Schmidt now. He's been terrific so far. Averaging 50 yards of boot so far as this one's away. And that is much too long. That's into the end zone for a touchback. Time running down. They go down to a knee. We have hit halftime. Still two more quarters to go. We'll take a timeout. We'll be back after this. You're watching the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. It's in the game. Thanks, Brandon, and welcome to the EA Halftime Report. I'm Larry Ridley. Let's take a look back at the first half. The Seahawks have not been careful with the football. The Bills don't haven't been able to pull away. But another half where they forced that many turnovers would likely lead them to a win. All right, let's do it. Here's a look at the first half highlights. Now to late in the second, Taylor has got the completion through the middle, and the play will come to an end after a gain of 30. Still late in the first half. Blitz is by himself here. After the short pass, he'll score. They go up by one. Staying late in the second. Middle of the field, Russell Wilson will find his mark. And he cap off the nine-play drive with a TD. Seahawks on top by six. So that'll do it from here in Orlando. For the second half kickoff, let's get you back up to Seattle and Brandon Guy. Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. Solid return, pretty good field position. They'll start at the 32-yard line. And Seattle now ready to march out of the field. They have the lead. Now they'll be looking for some separation here as we begin the third quarter. I like the way you turn that because now I think they go a little bit deeper into their playbook. They like what they did in the first half. That worked okay. 
But in order to get the separation that you just talked about, change things up a little bit. Change your tendencies, try and hit them a little bit more with some things they didn't see in the first half. Let's we'll see if they do just that. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he'll be tackled just past the 35 at the 36. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. It's been a struggle this entire game trying to move the ball on the ground. But every now and then, you find a little chink in the armor, and that type of run right there lets them know that they can't stop every single run for almost no gain. Second down, here's Wilson. It's caught on the left side by Baldwin. And he's brought down. Holding offense. So a little grabbing there, but this time it goes against the offense for holding. On second down, pressure comes and Wilson's going to go down. It's the rookie from Ohio State, Adolphus Washington. In there to make the sack, he buries him for a loss of 10. Well, it was second long, now it's third and even longer. They're going in the wrong direction here. Because they're moving exactly the way they want to, but you're exactly right. Definitely going in the wrong direction for the offensive guys. And some secondary help here for the defense in the nickel on third and long. Off the play fake, here's Wilson. He's going to loft one deep left side here. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. Well, they went for the big play there, but that drop could really hurt their momentum. Here's John Ryan now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. Fielded just inside the 30. A big kick that time, 52 yards. And the offense will come back onto the field for the first and 10. Now we take a glance at the offense as they work their way back out for their first possession of the second half. They were able to get the stop defensively. Now a chance really to set the tone here in quarter three. They can really take charge, can't they? And this is probably how it was drawn up at the half. I think we can go inside the locker room, all right? <laughs> and I think we would see up on the grease boards, stop them defensively, get the ball back for the offense, and let's go downfield and score. Seems simple, right? The last part, we have to find out if that's going to happen. But the first part worked to perfection. Did exactly what they wanted, and now their offense has to pay it off. See if they can get the latter 50%. Encroachment defense. Still first down. One man in the backfield, that's McCoy. And they'll give it to him here. And he'll get up to the 43-yard line. Give him five on the play there. And it's first down, Buffalo. It's nice every now and then in this game not to see people overthink it. Just hand it to the old reliable guy. Let him pick up the first down. So the run moves the chains, and here we go on first down. And 
And they'll keep on the ground with McCoy. Whoosh. They find some open field here. 20, 10, and all the way home for a Bills touchdown. LaShawn McCoy, 56 yards. And the Bills are an extra point away from taking the lead. And on that long run, maybe the defense caught napping a little bit. The concentration level may not have been there. I agree with you on that one because those types of plays, when they result like that, they're almost like big bolts of lightning, aren't they? Whoosh, and off he goes. Now Carpenter to add the extra point. And that one puts them on top here in the third. After the TD, here's Carpenter on to kick it away. Tyler Lockett now with a return. And not a bad return. Here he gets it out to the 25-yard line. The Seahawks offense now, they get set to go back to work. And they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you've called before, <laughs> realize it hasn't worked go to so something well, else. and maybe try and find one of those special plays from one of your better players, and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area. First and ten, it's Wilson. And he'll toss this one incomplete. Seeing no options, he throws it away. Little interesting sidebar. Each week we get notes to pour over for each team in the league. And we found that while the Browns have not won at home, there's also one other team in the league yet to win on their home turf. Who was that? Go ahead, let me know, because I, I know you've got the answer to this one. <laughs> I do. Tampa Bay, they're 3-1 and one on the road, 0-3 oh at home. That's a very unusual deal because all NFL teams preach defending your home turf and trying to split on the road. Tampa Bay seems to be reversing that a little bit. They get their next chance at home on Thursday night because they host the Atlanta Falcons, and Cleveland gets their next chance. They're hosting Dallas. It's a big hook up there. Wilson to Baldwin. 56 yards. That was a nice pickup. Some chunk yardage there. Some of those big yards downfield with a little bit of rack thrown in there, a little run after catch. And it came on a crossing route. I can just hear one of my friends who won four Super Bowls as a quarterback always said the same thing. What route does the defense hate? Crossing route. Hate it, hate it, hate it, because it's hard to change direction when they get going full speed in the other way. And now inside the red zone, the offense will operate. Coming to you, coming to you. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And they'll get him down right around the 16. A gain of three, second down. Partner, we know today's NFL is really built around the guy throwing the football. But these short runs, they still pay dividends because they can take their toll on a defense and they can add up as the game goes along. You control the clock, you control the ball, and that way you often control the game. We got three, we got three, fellas, we got three. Fellas. And he'll give it here to his running back. And he'll take this into the end zone. Now, hold on here. We do have a flag down. So let's see what this is about. So oftentimes you see defensive holding. Here it's offensive holding for the flag. So the defense has put them in a tough spot. It's second and long. Now they'll run on the draw. And he's going to lose yards. They take him down at the 26. It'll be a loss of a yard. And they're going to be staring at a third and long here. And yet again, this run game just continues to be completely shut off. Completely stymied. I mean, they're trying to get some consistency, trying to find places to roam. They just haven't been there throughout this game. Single, single. Single, single. 
And on third down, a nickel formation here defensively. Third and long, it's Wilson. It's caught outright by Graham. And he'll go down here right around the 23-yard line. Call it a gain of three. And that's going to bring up a fourth down. And good to see Jimmy back out there moving okay after the ruptured patella in week 12 last year. You've dealt with that injury, haven't you? I have, and uh, let me tell you, you know that expression, I feel it, feel your pain? I felt Jimmy's when it, when it happened. Now, mine didn't happen quite the same way his did. His happened in the line of duty. He was playing in a game. For me, I was just coaching. <laughs> <laughs> and went up to try and catch a pass. Poof. I think for me, it was just mainly age. For him, he was actually playing. But good to see him back out there healthy. Oh, they get to the football. It's blocked. It's picked up. A live ball here, remember. One universal in football. I mean, it's a kicking situation. All right, you're kicking a field goal, an extra point. You're punting. You never want to hear a second thud. That means the block has occurred. Imagine being the guys on the bench right now, the defensive unit. They thought they were going to get a cushion when they went back out on the field. That's no longer there. They had the chance to take a second-half lead, but the special teams unit, they said, not on our watch. Start the drive with a carry by McCoy. And he'll get this only up to about the 35. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. Let's give a lot of credit to the offensive line. They've been able to move the ball really well on the ground the entire game. And while that wasn't a huge one, that's okay. They'll take them in short, steady bursts. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. Now a 20th carry here for McCoy. Oh, nice move. <laughs> and a cut to the sideline. And all the way down to the nine. It's a big run there by McCoy. 56 yards on the ground. So you got the lead here in the second half. Obviously, you love big runs like that at any time. Here, you really like it. And how about the confidence that's being exhibited by that offense now? They don't care what you're lining up doing on the defensive side. They want the big fella to carry the football and carry it often. They come out here in the eye. And from the nine-yard line now, it's first and goal. And he will maneuver his way down to about the seven. It's a gain of a couple, and it'll be second and goal. Defensively, pretty good start there with their backs against the wall. That's a win for the stop troops right there. And if I'm them, I get a little bolder now. They won the first battle. Keep coming after them. Put the pressure on them. Second and goal. Defense digging in again here. And they'll be driven back here, losing yardage to the nine. And they'll lose a yard that time, and that's going to lead to a third down. Not only was that a terrific play, but that loss of yardage they created this close to their own goal line, that gives them a little breathing room now as they move them back. Yeah, they're breathing fire a little bit right now, aren't they? A lot of confidence being shown by them at this point of the game. Now from back at the nine after that last play, this is third and goal. From the shotgun, it's Taylor. Throwing for his running back, and he's got him complete. It'll be a three-yard gain, and that will bring up an interesting decision here on fourth and goal. One hallmark of good defenses is understanding the game, understanding positioning, and tackling immediately in the secondary after catches. I think we just saw that on display right there. Got to him before he ever had a chance to think about turning it upfield. So on fourth down, here comes a field goal unit for the Bills, led by Dan Carpenter. This is a fairly straightforward 22-yard short attempt. And Carpenter knocks it through, and that'll move their lead up to four now. So no problems there with that one as they're able to put three up on the board. Yeah, it's pretty much a windless night. There's only a very light breeze, so it's a perfect night for kickers. And like you say, no problems with that one. 
Carpenter now, after the made field goal, will kick this one away. This will be taken in at the one. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. Personal foul, face mask, defense. Charles, I know it's hard when live bullets are flying, but you cannot keep your hand up around the face mask area. It is absolutely inexcusable nowadays. We talk about target areas all the time. You have to aim lower so that your hand doesn't get involved in the face mask. They come out here in the eye. Now Wilson on first down. He's going to get this one out to his fullback. And he'll get it into enemy territory just across midfield at the 49. Give him six on the play, and that'll bring up second down. It's interesting because when I'm watching college football and I'm evaluating guys for the draft now, my list of fullbacks, pure fullbacks, it's a very short list. I'm probably evaluating more punters and kickers now than I am fullbacks, but doesn't matter what you call the position, it's who you put there, and there we saw completion. On second down, Wilson. Complete out right to Kurz. Give him three on the play, and that is going to set up a third and one. The goal of a wide receiver screen is get enough blockers in front to create a wall and let him pick his spot to run the football. How about the defense there swarming to it and not allowing that to happen? Did not let him get downfield. Defense has to stand tall here, third and one. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he's taken down at the 43, but not before picking up the first. Give him three yards and a fresh set of downs. Everyone understood their role on that play. Third and one, you know the defensive guys, they're trying to get down and get low and get leverage on the offensive lineman, but they didn't allow that to happen. They created a crease and allowed him to get through for a first down. So it'll be first down here after the run. Well, throw on first down with Wilson. It's caught on the left side by Baldwin. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. And a nice pitch and catch to pick up the reception against man coverage. Both of them read how much yardage they needed, figured what they had to do, and were able to beat the man coverage for the completion. And the offense lining up first and 10. They'll give it to him right up the gut. And this has been a recurring theme tonight for sure. Nowhere to run. Back to the line of scrimmage, that's all. Well, on that play, the expression, don't blink, you might miss something, certainly applied. That was fast. Defense diagnosed the play, and it was over in a heartbeat. A little bit of ground to make up for the offense as they face a second and 11. Now Wilson on second down. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And he'll get this one down to about the 20-yard line. Well, they obviously read man coverage there, partner, and he got downfield, broke down the defender, made him what think. What do you mean by that? Perfect. Yeah, he made him think he was going to run a different route. Probably thought he was going to take it upfield, and then curls back inside for the completion. They go read option with Wilson. And he gets it inside the 10 to the 9. It's a nice pickup of 12 yards, and it gives him a first and goal. 
Well, partner, for a few years there, we thought this read option play was going to take over the whole NFL. It seemed like everyone was using it, but it has been scaled back considerably in the last few seasons, mainly because people worried about their quarterbacks getting hit. But when you call it at the right time and you use it properly, you see the type of gains you can get. A nice chunk of yardage there by the quarterback. Offense walks to the line for play number seven of the drive. One receiver left, two to the right. There's Wilson to throw. He's got time in the pocket. Oh, and they take him down. The Bills get to him. Kyle Williams in there to sack him for a loss of six. Well, that was point-counterpoint, wasn't it? They decide to throw for it on first and goal. Instead, the defense counters with pressure, and the defense wins, getting a big sack. And now the offense will look to respond after the sack. A second down carry for Prosize. Only a yard there, and that'll bring us to third and goal. An extra defensive back on the field here for third and goal. On third and goal, Wilson can't find anyone open. That is caught at the seven-yard line. Holding offense. Hauschka now for the Seahawk field goal. And remember, he had one blocked earlier. And Hauschka's kick is good. And that'll bring him back within a point. So they get three field goals for him now, and this last one tightens things up a bit. And I know that offense is on the sideline right about now, checking out the tablets and saying, man, we let a good chance slip away there. We've got to start finishing some of these drives field goal Hauschka back out onto the field to kick it away this field a few yards into the end zone and with a new rule that decision to bring it out will cost him about five yards as he only gets to the 20 and now out come the Bills and they split the uprights last time for three they've got the lead they're not going to play this conservative they're not hoping for another field goal they're hoping for a touchdown I'm with you on that one I like where your head is I like the way you're thinking because you're exactly right trying to sit on a lead and play that way that doesn't work too well for most teams run your offense yeah, run what you do best. On the gas. exactly put it all the way right. down and try to increase your lead in a big way and the best way to do it touchdowns They'll throw on first down with Taylor. He completes it to Hunter. And he'll get it up here this time to the 21. Call it a one-yard gain on the play. And it's a second down. Completed pass play. Now let's see if they go back to the air or to the ground. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he got blown up on that play. Back at the 20. They'll lose a yard and it brings up third. But that certainly felt like an example of a defense just saying, okay, <laughs> we've had enough. We've gotten mashed all night long. About time we got a good play in. But flip it over to the offensive side. They've got to be really upset that they allowed a play like that to happen. They were pitching such a great game. They want to keep it going. So here we go now. An extra defensive back in there on third and ten. 
from the shotgun. It's Taylor. He's got time. And incomplete. He had nowhere to throw, so he just tossed it away. But that brings up fourth. Here's Colton Schmidt now, standing right on his own five-yard line. He's averaging just under 50 yards a punt as he gets this away. Now it's Lockett. A good return there, 17 yards. And it'll be Seahawk football first and 10. And Seattle now ready to march out of the field. And after the field goal last time, we'll see what they can get here. And at least they got points out of the last drive, Charles. I've never met an offensive coach that didn't want a drive to end with a kick. <laughs> Most of them want to end with a PAT, right? In this case, a field goal, they'll take it way better than the alternative, which is a punt. Yeah, but you met fan bases that wanted that, that weren't happy with that field goal. <laughs> I haven't met a fan base yet that wants a drive to end with a kick <laughs> other than the extra point. That's it. They come out here in the eye. And to give this time to the tailback. And he'll take this one across the 45 up to about the 46-yard line. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. In order to play really good run defense when you're playing a 3-4, those three guys up front, the nose tackle and the guys they call the defensive ends, they're usually big, big people because they're going to have to eat up a lot of blockers because it's usually five on three. And when they do their job well, guys who play on the inside, those inside linebackers, they're able to just roam and hit. Back now in Seattle, Washington. This one's still anybody's ball game. It's a one-point difference here as we begin the fourth quarter of play. times when you see these catches that are made and we just know the guys playing it are really wishing for college rules only need that one, one foot, foot down instead of two it's awfully difficult on the sideline isn't it and the offense looks to pick up the first here on third after that incompletion on third down Wilson he's got curse and he's going to have the first down at about the 38. And give him 17 yards that time as that'll move the chains. So he makes the grab and the chains move forward. Nice job by the offensive line giving them time to complete that first down pass. down Wilson it's caught outright by Graham and the play goes nowhere losing yardage back near the 40 at the 39 a pass for negative yardage obviously no good maybe he shouldn't have thrown it or maybe he shouldn't have caught it I think we were seeing it at the same time weren't we maybe you let that one go right because you can see the lost yardage about to develop but that goes against every instinct of a receiver they're taught to catch everything so it's really hard to be mad at him and yell at him for trying to make that play and the offense behind the chains here a touch on second and 11. in the slot on the right is graham check backer, check backer. to throw again is wilson that is incomplete Kristen Michael was the intended receiver. And that takes us from second to third down. I remember growing up playing basketball. My coaches always talked about communicating on defense, making sure you talk on defense, know where your screens are, know where the cuts are coming from, who has who. Well, guess what? It's the same thing in football. Even though there's more noise out there, you can hear all the screams of screen, screen. The defense, the bench, everyone let them know what the play was, and that's why they were able to react and knock the ball away. Again, Wilson. 
Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Adolphus Washington in there to drop in for his second sack now here tonight. I remember when I was a kid, and all I wanted was a nickel so I could get that soda down at the fountain. And guess what? The nickel came into play well. Five defensive backs, they covered well, allowed for the sacks. Sodas were a nickel when you were a kid? No, I just needed the extra nickel oh. so, I could pay the, so I could pay the proper price. Okay, how much were they? A dime? <laughs> what were they? Uh, 15 cents. Here's John Ryan now, as he'll come on to kick for a sixth time tonight. And this will depend on the spot as it sails out of bounds. And they'll say it sailed out at the 10-yard line. offense comes out ready to take over. They're out in front. Last time they had to punt it away. We'll see if they can add to their lead now. They don't want to go out and, and punt it away again. This team now wants to get a cushion, put people away. They want to run their offense and have it end up in the end zone. A loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. The fourth quarter here, they've got the lead. They want to keep it on the ground. That's what they're doing. Smart football. Keep the clock grinding. Keep it going. But you got to figure now, they're going to see more people stacked up in the line of scrimmage as they try and bleed it out. Defense in a good spot. Let's see how the offense responds with a second and 13 now. Hey, go down, go down. Go. A fake to McCoy. Now it's Taylor surveying the field. And he'll check this one down to McCoy. And he'll get it up to the 12-yard line here. Five yards on the pickup, and all of a sudden here, it's third down. I know most of the time when the ball's in the air, you're thinking wide receiver, tight end, but running backs, they can be a big part of any passing offense nowadays. They'll put two receivers left, two to the right. On third down, Taylor. And he'll just toss it away. So he throws it away, and that brings up fourth down. Let's face it, perfection is something we all chase, whether it's playing this game or whatever we do. Hard to attain, but that's what they were searching for as that pass goes incomplete. Here's Colton Schmidt now as he's on to punt for Buffalo. Returnable for Lockett. Look at the spin. Balance. Good blocking there. Nearly sprung him. As it is, it'll go as a 19-yard return. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. And he finds his tight end, Graham. He got 18 yards out of that one, and it gets him a new set of downs. That next teammate used to tell me all the time, I hate experienced quarterbacks because no matter what, you really can't hide what you're doing. And I think that right there, he knew right away where the blitz was coming from, where his primary guy was going to be, and he ended up going to a secondary target for a nice game. I was just going to ask you, that wasn't the primary target. And he's so good at that, isn't he? I think he knew right away that he wasn't going to get to his primary guy. I think he read that as soon as he got to the line of scrimmage, knew where the pressure was going to come from, and said, ah, I know how to beat that, and that's what he did. And this is caught at the eight. And he's brought down. After a good game. Push it aside. Nothing to pass or defense. Roughing the passer, that's shades of Charles Davis back in his playing days. Oh, I sure wish it had been, Brandon. Back in my day, I didn't hit anyone hard enough to rough the passer. I had a, no, I had a number of teammates that handled that for me.
Looks like the defense in press coverage here. False start's going to push him back, but these days, how hard must it be to be an offensive lineman? It's very hard, Brandon. You've got defensive linemen flinching, trying to draw you offside. You've got the loud crowds, and there are just so many super athletic players on defense now that you have to deal with each week. But through it all, these guys just sit in there for four quarters and slug it out. And on the ground they go with a running back. And they'll lose yardage here. They go backwards to the 13-yard line. It's a loss of five there, bringing up second. And frankly, Brandon, we're talking about things I'm not sure we ever thought we'd talk about in the NFL. And a lot of that is the speed at the linebacker position. A lot of these guys in college, they were safeties. They moved them up to outside linebacker to combat the spread offenses, and now we're seeing it in the NFL. Those same guys using their speed to make plays in the backfield, similar to that one. And this has been a recurring theme tonight for sure. Nowhere to run. Back to the line of scrimmage, that's all. And they'll lose a yard that time, and that's going to lead to a third down. Wasn't that long ago that the NFL guys really didn't adopt much from the college game. But one thing that has crept in there is spreading things out, opening things up, not even just in tempo, but maybe getting better line splits and spreading the field. I think that would be a great strategy right now to try and open things up in the run game. Third and goal now. Maybe the offensive coordinator thinking blitz here. And he'll get this one down to about the 10-yard line. And three yards on the carry there as his defense holds strong and takes it to fourth and goal. A pressure spot now for a guy who's been here before, and that's Steven Hauschka. And Hauschka's kick is good. And with that, they will move ahead by two here in the fourth. So the drive here ends with a field goal, and that does give them the lead, but this one is still a long ways from over. And you love to be able to look up at the scoreboard and see that you're out in front, but then you take one look across the field and see that offense is raring to come back out, and you think, I don't know that field goals are going to be enough to get us home. Now after the made field goal, Hauschka back out onto the field to kick it away. This is taken at the three. And he'll get it up to about the 26-yard line just across the 25. And the Seahawks defense heads back out there now. They're just looking to duplicate what they did last time, force the three and out, and that led to a field goal. The only thing better, really, is creating a turnover. Three and out, get off the field, feel good about yourself, turn the ball over to your offense, and they put the ball through the post with a field goal. They're probably pretty well rested after that three and out, too. One would think. That's how you get it done. Create the three and outs, get to the bench, get your rest, and hope your offense can control the game. Now Taylor on first down. And this one caught by Hunter over the middle. And he's brought down after a good game. A good pick up there, a 22. And there they went crossing route against the zone defense. What do you think of that? It takes real coordination between the passer and the receiver because you've got to read those zones and where the open spots are and be on the same page with the guy throwing the football. Because sometimes you're throwing it in front of the zone. Sometimes you're throwing it between the zone. Sometimes the receiver's going to just kind of find a spot in what we call sit down and present himself to the quarterback and throw it there. It's a tough read, but when they're in sync, it's really effective. Here we go. One, nine, four, 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 nine. On first and ten, it's Taylor. Right side complete. That's Woods. And he's brought down after a good game. Personal foul, roughing the passer, defense. 
Oh, and the defender took some liberties there with a late hit, roughing the passer. The league has done a great job of defining what is a late hit and a legal contact on a quarterback. The defenders really have to get in line. In the red zone this time. One man in the backfield. That's McCoy. Throwing now, Taylor on first down. This will be caught at about the six. And he's brought down. A solid pickup of 13 sets him up first and goal. Well, that's what you're looking for when you want to throw the ball downfield. You want one of those guys who can play out on the perimeter, can play out wide, who can not only get open, but when they're covered, can uncover themselves downfield and create catches. Taylor. And that is caught. Touchdown, Buffalo. Justin Hunter there to make the grab. And the Bills have taken the lead here in the fourth quarter. And that score gives us our sixth lead change of the game. Are we back on the playground on the seesaw? A little seesaw battle, right? yeah. Up and down, up and down. What a game we've watched here. It's been fun. Carpenter now for the extra point. And the lead is up to five. After the TD, here's Carpenter on to kick it away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And last year, that would have been a net gain of five on the return. This year, he stopped where he would have been if he had taken a knee. And that's at the 25. And Seattle now ready to march out of the field. And last time, able to get three. It's not what they wanted. They wanted six, but they got at least something. They mustered something out of the drive. They'll take it. Just I, I like the way you, you've described it. Not ideal, but they'll take it. Anything to put some points on the board. But this time on offense, they don't even want to see the field goal kicker trot on the field. <laughs> they want that ball in the end zone. Yeah, they'll be going for six. On first down, Wilson. Finding time. It's caught. Lock it. Give him seven on the play, and it'll bring up a second down. I know many people like to throw to the tight end, maybe in a little flexed out position because he creates mismatches with his size. The slot receivers do the same thing with their quickness, their speed, and their route running savvy. Second down now after the pass completion. And they'll run it here. And this has been a recurring theme tonight for sure. Nowhere to run. Back to the line of scrimmage, that's all. Tackle made there by Zach Brown. Two yards to go here on third down. here to his running back. Just a one-yard pick up there, and it'll be fourth down. And, partner, when you run the ball on third and two, you're telling the whole world you've got nothing but confidence in your offensive line and your runner, and you expect to get it. But they were stuffed on that play. Only got one yard. Great job by the defensive front, the linebackers. Everyone got involved to force a fourth down. Here's John Ryan now as he's on to punt for Seattle. <laughs> Call it 46 yards on the punt, just a single yard on the return as he was covered quickly. And the Bills will be backed up to start the drive. They'll have it first and 10. 
Here's the Buffalo offense now as they get set to take over here. And they will simply, Charles, be looking to duplicate what they did last drive when they were able to push it in for six. And they hope it'll be that easy, right, to be able to take exactly what happened before, replicate it. They may have to make a few additional changes along the way because I'm sure the defense will make some adjustments, but they've got to have great confidence having scored the last time out. This give is to McCoy, and McCoy loses the football. But fortunately, he's able to recover his own fumble, or that could have been trouble. All I can say about this play is that someone's living right. I mean, he's trying to gain the yard. He's trying to get upfield. Ball comes free. What's that panic that we've talked about oftentimes that you feel when you yeah, lose the ball? You can sense it. Oh, you can sense it. And somehow he got to it and was able to recover it for his squad. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage look defensively. Here we go. Brad, right. And they'll keep it on the ground with McCoy. And tough going there as he'll only get it up to about the 31. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. And in this situation with the lead fourth quarter, they're liking keeping the ball on the ground, I'm sure. That's just smart football, but you know the defense has to know it as well. They've got to stop them here. So now we're going to see that loading the box in a big way. Six, seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take. It's a little bit more pressure on your big offensive line. And he's just going to get rid of this thing. To no one here, he throws it away. And now it's third. looking to pick up the first down after the second down incompletion. A nickel back added defensively as they look to stop this third and eight. Taylor will throw to the sideline and oh, a nice catch there. Made sure the feet were inbounds and they were. I do have to admit, I like it when it all comes together. When the top part, catching the football, right? Whether you're catching it with your hands or cradling it, comes together with the legs, in this case the feet, doing a little toe tap to stay inbounds and complete the catch. And a great job by our crew on the camera shot. Love when you see the grass or on the field turf, those rubber pellets flying up. Great catch. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. And did they keep it in? They did. They kept it in. It's down close to the goal line at the one-yard line. Here come the Seahawks now, set to take over on offense. And not great starting field position here for the offense. They'll give it to him right up the gun. And he'll get this only up to about the three-yard line. Give him a couple on the carry there, second and eight. Well, he got what he could there, just trying to move forward and, and gain a little bit of yardage and create some space. You know the pressure is going to be tough defensively. Down around his goal line. He's got time in the pocket. Baldwin with it over the middle. And he's able to get this one all the way past the 30. And that right there will set him back a bit on the offensive holding penalty. And you know who you want to pressure after a penalty like that? the guy who just committed the foul. You want to see if he's going to keep his head down or if he's going to get his head right back into the game. I'd send a blitz at him right away and see if he holds up. Rip left, rip left. 
They'll come out in the pistol. And he'll give it here to his running back. Oh, and he's not going to make it out of the end zone. The push too strong, and that'll be a safety. I think you'd have to say this crowd here in Seattle, this 12th man had something to do with that. As well as the architect of this stadium. Combined with this crowd noise, makes it very difficult to run offense. And here, two points result for the defense. It is deafening in here. The safety, remember, they also need to give up the football, and here's the free kick. Taken in at the 22. No, oh, a nifty juke there. Not much fun for a guy trying to tackle it. Now the Bills offense gets ready to head back onto the field. They've got the lead. Last time had to punt it, though. What's the key to this drive? I think it's leverage. Ah, the leverage. big guys up front. You know the motivational speech on the sideline is, guys, give us an opportunity. Protect the passer, create space for our runners, and let's go ahead and get these guys. Low man wins. Let's go do it on this drive. <laughs> we'll watch that leverage on this drive. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. On first down, it's Taylor. It's a short one here, complete to his tight end. And he'll get it out near the 40 to the 39. Seven yards on the play, and it'll make it second down. When you execute a drag or a crossing route really well and give them a chance to let it develop a little bit, you can gain some significant yardage hitting your tight end on that one. to McCoy. Now it's Taylor. And look at this. They get the turnover they needed. It's intercepted. Picked off by the Pro Bowl safety Cam Chancellor. A critical error there in a tight game of the fourth. All you talk about is taking care of the football. And especially with a lead here in the fourth quarter. Turning it over. Now the door is open for the opposition. Just in general, when you're passing in the fourth quarter with a lead, no matter at what point, you got to be super careful. Got to be careful. And sometimes you can be so careful that you end up running yourself into an error. And yeah, the Seahawks get ready to trot out on the field. And last time they surrendered the safety, we know they don't want to do that again. That is just one of those oddities in scoring that we get. And it's just so strange to see that go up on the board. And then you've got to make sure that that doesn't happen to your team again. They've got to take care of the ball. But, boy, it juices up the defense. Oh, without a doubt. That's a great way to score some points. After the interception, here's Wilson. It's caught on the left side by Baldwin. And he gets this one to midfield before he's brought down. He goes for 18 there as the drive will continue. And leading here late, so a chance for the defense to really close out this game if they can halt the offense. From midfield now. Here's Wilson. He gets it to Baldwin. And he's brought down after a good game. And a nice gain of 21 yards. So with a yardage on that completion, he's now right at exactly 300 yards on the game. And isn't that the magic number you get? All right, 300. That means it's going to go on a commemorative football to put on your mantle when they give you the game ball if your team wins. So much confidence flowing through him right now, throwing the football. I think it's permeated itself throughout the entire team. They feel good about what they're doing. So after that big play, let's see if they can catch their defense maybe on their heels. In the slot on the right is Graham. They'll throw on first down with Wilson. They'll lock it with a grab over the middle. Time for a break. We'll come back for the electrifying conclusion after this. So it's Seahawk football as we march toward a conclusion. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. And the next snap coming inside the red zone here. Right, 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 right. 
They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll get him inside the 15 down to the 14-yard line. They get six on the pick up there as the drive will continue. And quickly, they get to the line. Back to throw. He's going to flip one out here to his running back. And he's brought down. It's a 10-yard gain there, and it sets him up now first and goal. Back to throw. And he's got it. Caught in the end zone for the Seahawk touchdown. Tyler Lockett from three yards out. And the Seahawks just an extra point away from tying this thing up. Love the excitement we get going here. They just scored the touchdown. They're down by one. How much fun is it now to figure out the possibilities? Kick the extra point and tie it. Go for two if they're really feeling in a gambling mood. What do you do in this situation? I think you kick the PAT. Yeah, I do too. Kick it, get my defense ready, and try and stop them one more time. Still an important piece of business to take care of, the extra point. And no sweat. He puts it through, and we are tied here in the fourth. Set to go now with the kickoff. These two teams all even again as we continue in this wild fourth quarter. Here's Tate to return. They'll bring it back to just about the 25. Call it the 24-yard line. Now the Bills offense gets ready to head back onto the field. They've got work to do, but they do still have a bit of time here. And they've got to feel comfortable with that, but they have all their play sequences called. If they get out of bounds, that allows them to huddle and call another play. But if they don't, it's hurry up to the line of scrimmage and either spike it and stop the clock or continue to move it downfield in order to try and get in range and win this game. See if they can do just that. Taylor to throw. He completes it to Hunter. And he'll get to the 29-yard line brought down there. It's a gain of six on the play, and that'll make it second down. And the offense moving quickly to the line. Here's Taylor. Going to drop this off to McCoy. Complete. It's a seven-yard gain there, and it's good enough to move the chains. Well, we looked at each other right when he flinched. We knew that that flag was coming. Yeah, offsides, easy call. Mark off the five and keep it moving. And this one is incomplete. Offside, defense. Still first down. Timeout on their side here. In fact, a lot going against them. They do have a small glimmer of hope. No one likes to play extra football. They want to go for the win right now. Throwing now is Taylor. Fighting his safety valve here. That's complete. They'll get 17 yards there. And it'll give the Bills a first down. Another pistol look here. Hey, 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 hey. Let's go. One, now flags One, will come in. One of the Bills got going a little early. Ball start. Offense. So the penalty by the offense, and now they face a first and 15. They come out five wide, three of them to the right side. And now movement again, and they'll march even further backward. False start, offense. Let's go! Brad 38! Brad 38! 
it's Taylor. He's got time. And the tip there altered the ball flight, and it falls incomplete. It'll be second down. Anytime a ball's thrown in the middle of the field that's popped up in the air, I expect someone to catch. It doesn't matter whether it's offense or defense because there's usually a great amount of bodies in that part of the field. In this case, no one came up with it. To throw again is Taylor. Over the middle and caught by the tight end play. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. And we are back here. I'm Brandon Gaughan alongside Charles Davis. So the offense takes the timeout. And now we're set to get going. Offense trying to avoid stalling out, facing a third and ten. They'll run with Gellisley. And a spin look. And the Seahawks are going to take a timeout here on defense. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. So the timeout over and all 11 men back out onto the field for the defense. So the field goal unit is on the field as this is a big spot right here. This to take the lead here in the final minute. And did he have enough? He did. He kept it on line and managed to tuck it into the bottom right corner. And the sideline celebrates as they have taken the lead in the final minute. All right, so time to reset here. It's a huge kick there. It gives them the lead, but they've got to be careful that their celebrations aren't a little too premature. You're exactly right about that because there still is time for the other guys to run a few plays and get into field goal position. So this defense is going to need to come up with one final stop if they're going to get out of here with a victory. Carpenter now, after the made field goal, will kick this one away. Block at the return. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get it up to the 29-yard line. The Seattle now ready to march out of the field. They only need a field goal. Obviously, the clock a huge factor. They'll be watching that. What do they need to do here, Charles? Your sequence of plays has to get you out of bounds. Completions, get out of bounds, gain some yardage. Then when the clock hits seven seconds or left, now you've got a decision. Are you in field goal range, or is it Hail Mary time? Because from seven seconds down, you don't want to take a shot that you're going to have another play. We'll see how they handle it. He's back to throw. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. Everything about that play tells you about today's NFL offenses and what they're asking out of running backs. You can't just be a guy who can run the football. You have to be able to catch it as well. And he didn't get that done on that play. Just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play.
So the offense took the timeout. Looks like they're ready to go as we get set to resume the action. Third down and three. now. One score down. Here we go. They're going to go for it here on fourth down. Three receivers to the left, one to the right. Here we go. It's Wilson on fourth down. Surveying the field. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. And it's incomplete. So their final drive comes up empty. And with that, the ball game is over. Charles, this is not an easy place to win. They are known for having such a great crowd. But how about that? They came in here, they were determined from the opening kick, and they got it done. And they've done such a great job at putting an excellent team on the field. But the architects that built this stadium to keep the noise in, and that crowd responds in a big way. But you're exactly right. Hard to believe that people can still come in here and win the game. So that'll do it for my partner, Charles Davis, and the best darn crew in the industry. I'm Brandon Gauden. This has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. With that, we say good night from Seattle.